Hey folks, so good to see you tonight here at our uh, Bible study with First Baptist Church, Saudi Daisy. Thanks for sticking with us. I, I think a few more weeks of this and we'll be ready to get back together. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully within the next you know, three weeks or so, uh, we'll be able to gather back together on Wednesday nights. We will keep you updated as soon as, with as much information as we can uh, and let you know as soon as possible when that's going to happen. So uh, not too long, but thanks again for sticking with us, for being a part of our, our Wednesday night Bible study. We'll continue uh, our best to do this uh, digitally as well. it just be in a different place uh, over in the in the sanctuary. Um, so we're, we're kind of taking a, a little deviation from what we had been studying, the prayers of Jesus. We'll come back to those in a little while, but I wanted to just spend a few weeks on on something that's really prevalent in, in our world today, uh, and that's suffering. What is suffering? Uh, you know, I, I think the, the age-old question that's asked is, how can a sovereign God let good things happen to bad people or let bad things happen to good people? The whole deal is it's, it's a problem of evil. Is What is evil? Evil is existent, in existence. What What is evil? How do we respond to it? What do we uh, do about it? What do we do about pain? What do we do about suffering? You know, the Bible never really provides explanation for all suffering. It doesn't really tell us uh, suffering is because of this or that, uh, but we need to trust that, uh, that that is grounded in evidence of God's working in our world. We need to trust that that God is, is working in our world, and because of that, uh, we have hope in the midst of suffering. You see, what when we talk about suffering, suffering is not our goal, of course. Faith is our goal, and today, I think we're going to look at, over the next several weeks, how we can I guess suffer for the glory of God maybe is the right way of saying it. Uh, the next week or two, we're going to look at just a framework of suffering. What does the Bible say about suffering? Uh, and then we're going to see how it can be used for the glory of God. So we're going to just take a, a few weeks. I know it's not a, always a fun topic, but it is one that I think we need to have a grasp on because God's Word discusses it. So the first thing I want to say tonight is where does suffering come from? Where do we Where do we find suffering? I mean, think about it. If God created everything for good, and he tells us that in the scriptures, he says after he created, he created uh, light, darkness, and separated them, and he said it was day one, it was good. He created you know, everything, and every time he said it was good. Um, if everything is good, where does suffering come in? Is it good? Well, suffering was not a created thing by God. Suffering came along when Adam and Eve disobeyed in the garden listen to listen to what well, i said it wasn't created it was created by god but uh, it wasn't in the creation it was a byproduct of of sin found in genesis 3 uh, when adam and eve sinned and god talked to them in, in verses in chapter 3 verses 16 through 19 listen to what it says he said to the woman i will intensify your labor pains you will bear children with painful effort your desire will be for your husband yet he will rule over you and he said to the man, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will pro produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground since you were taken from it. For you are dust, and you will return to dust." You see, <laughs> excuse me, so what God is saying here is, yeah, because of your sin, suffering is coming in. By the way, I want to take a little sidebar. Um, there are some people and uh, who who wrongfully just accuse Eve of of um, disobeying and sin came from Eve. Sin didn't, sin didn't come from Eve. Uh, Adam and Eve were together, and sin didn't come from, sin originated from the temptation that Satan gave them. And so because of that, because sin came in through Adam and Eve's collective choice to disobey God and to do what ultimately he told them not to do, there's there's suffering in the world. Uh, and I think if we, we, we realize that the judgment of God on that sin brought physical, emotional, and relational suffering and pain. If you keep reading in Genesis 5, you see it talk about Adam 
and he died. And then it went on the, down the line of people came from Adam and it talks about they died, they died, they died. Death hadn't come into the world yet until sin and pain and suffering came in. Uh, so at the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 5, we see pain and suffering. We're in Genesis 3, uh, pain and suffering come in. Uh, and then we see suffering, the, the result of suffering, death, come in, in Genesis 5. All the way through the Bible, we see that. But then in, we get to Revelation chapter 21, reading verses 1 through 4, which I encourage you to do later, where it talks about the end of suffering. You see, suffering exists because of sin. But, it do, but does that mean every time we sin, we're going to suffer? Or does that mean every time we suffer, it's directly because of a sin? Well, let's look at an Old Testament uh, person in the Bible. Let's look at Job and see, hopefully we can get some answers from the life of Job. What does Job teach us about suffering? I want to read verses 9 through 12 to you. Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Haven't you placed a hedge around him, his household, and everything he owns? You've blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he owns, and he will surely curse you to your face. Very well, the Lord told Satan. Everything he owns is in your power. However, do not lay a hand on Job himself. So Satan left the presence of the Lord. Here's some things we can learn from the life of Job. Number one. Suffering is real. Suffering is real. Job is about to go through immense suffering. Uh, some people in churches today are so committed to a theology of a good God and God's goodness. Now, I, I, I want to be I want to caution you to say I am not saying that God isn't good. God is good. God is great. God is loving, all loving, but He's also just. Um, but some people are so committed to the theology of God's goodness that suffering has no place in it and suffering shouldn't really bother us uh and and i i really want to caution you to go that route to that extreme uh which really is almost more of a buddhist way of thinking than a christian way of thinking because job suffers right there is suffering job loses his wealth his family his reputation and eventually his health in chapter two job loses almost everything he has except for for his life. Suffering is real, and suffering is a problem. For the, we, have, we cannot avoid it. We cannot say that it doesn't affect us. We cannot say that it's, it's not real. Suffering is real. You know that. I know that. So you've experienced suffering and pain in your life. I have in mine. We, we can't avoid the fact that suffering is real. Number, number two, though, uh, that God is sovereign over suffering. God is sovereign over suffering. And think about the scripture we just read. Does God cause the suffering that Job is going to experience? No. Satan causes it. But does God allow it to happen? Absolutely. He does. Um, God, God allows Satan the opportunity to test Job in this way, to allow Job to suffer. Um, I mean, and even Job says in chapter 2, verse 10, should I accept good from the Lord and not trouble? Uh, God didn't cause the suffering, but because he is sovereign, and in his sovereignty, he allows it to happen. P pain is inflicted by a sovereign God, like it, it, in suffering through God and suffering through other ways. Think about it this way. It's like the difference between a surgeon's scalpel and a criminal's knife. Both cut, both hurt, but one is doing it to correct and help, and one's doing it to hurt. When God allows suffering, yes, it's painful, and I don't, I, I don't like suffering. None of us would say we do, but God allows it to correct us, to bring us back in line with him. We must remember that God is in control even in and through our suffering and that he is good to his children because guess what in the midst of the suffering where is he right beside us for those of us who know him christ doesn't leave us because we're suffering because we're going through a, a difficult time it's not that god says i'm leaving and you're going to deal with this on your own he says no i'm going to be with you i'm going to walk with you i'm going to be your strength when you have no strength on your own god is sovereign over our suffering Thirdly, 
there is a such thing as innocent suffering. Not we don't suffering is is a result of the fall. There's no suffering before the fall. So in one way, it's not really innocent, but really Job didn't do anything. Job suffered because of his righteousness, not because of a specific sin. You and I will most likely face suffering because of because of godliness sometimes, not just over a specific sin. Now, there will be some suffering due to our sin. And whether it's now or years from now or weeks from now or some other time, suffering will happen because of our sin. But, but here, we see that Job didn't do anything to deserve it, but he still suffered. Satan's point was, he's a righteous man. You've given him everything. If you take it away, that's when he'll, he'll, he'll curse you. That's when he will, uh, he'll walk away from you. Um, but if you take away the things from him, he's still not suffering because of that. He's suffering because of his righteousness. I mean, think about, think about Jesus when he's walking with his disciples and they saw a blind man and the disciples pointed to him and said, Jesus, did this man or his parents sin so that he would be born blind? Jesus said, neither one of them. He was born blind so that the power of the Lord could be seen through him, so that you would see God working in this situation, in this man's life, so the glory of God could be displayed through him. Suffering can be an innocent suffering. We must expect suffering because we live in a broken, suffering world. But lastly, in all of our suffering, we must trust that was Job's point of view. He he trusted, and and even when even in his trust, when it lacked a little bit, and he he asked God why. He definitely wondered why he was going through it, but he trusted the Lord. And listen, in in Psalm, excuse me, in Job thirty eight, God responds to Job, and when Job says, "Why am I suffering like this?" Job, God responds to Job in, in some very interesting ways. Some questions I want to read you some of the ways God responds to Job and really just say, look, you're not me. <laughs> I'm God. You're not. This is what, what he's telling Job. Listen to what he says in chapter 38, verse 4. God says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you understand. Verse 12, have you given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? Verses 22 and 23 says, have you entered the storehouses of snow or seen the storehouses of hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle. Verses 31 and 32. Can you find the beautiful palades? Can you lose the cords of Orion? Can you bring forth the constellations in their season or lead out the bear with its cubs? Talking about stars. Can you make that happen? I don't think so. In, in, in chapter 40, verse 2, he says, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. In verse eight, 40, verse 8 says, Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justice? Justify yourself. What is God saying to Job? I'm in control. Trust me. Trust me. It sounds like he's being so harsh. But what he's really doing is he's reminding Job, Hey, I'm God and you're not. And which I think is a critical uh, understanding if we're going to understand and, and grasp suffering in our world and, and being able to deal with suffering that God is God and I'm not there are some things that we just won't understand fully because we aren't God we must trust in faith that God is still in control because we know he is suffering is found all over the Bible it's not just in the Old Testament uh, if you not just in the book of Job, if you look and go backwards and forwards in the Bible, you'll see suffering. In the ex, in Exodus, you see the 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 Israelites suffer. Uh, when um, in in the book of Ruth that we just talked about a few Sundays ago, Naomi. Think about the suffering that Naomi, Naomi went through with Elimelech, Malon, and Kilion dying and having to move back and all the things that she had. Uh, Habakkuk, which is going to be a sermon series that we're talking about next year basically is answering the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Um, but think forward in the New Testament, the ultimate suffering. Think about Paul's life, first of all. Paul suffered much, but the ultimate suffering on the cross, when Jesus suffered on the cross, he didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't punishment for his sins. It was punishment for your sin and for mine. He suffered 
so that we ultimately we could have true life. In the end, throughout suffering, we can trust God that he is sovereign over all and in control no matter what. So in just a little bit, at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a Zoom meeting just to discuss some suffering, what suffering is. And we're just going to take those points line by line, that there is suffering is real, um, God is still sovereign, there's no such thing, or there is a such thing as innocent suffering, and in our midst of suffering, we must trust. And we're going to just talk about those. And how can we trust God in the midst of suffering? And maybe we can share some of those and pray with one another. I love you guys so much. Thank you for, for hanging with me today. Uh, I pray that this was encouraging. Sounds like it might have been. I don't know. <laughs> Talking about suffering can't be that encouraging. But I, I hope that it was encouraging to know that suffering is something that we all go through. And God is still in control no matter what. We'll continue to talk through this a few more, a few more Wednesdays. Um, and I, I thank you guys for being with me. Love you. I hope you have a great rest of your night. And we will see you hopefully in just a few minutes over on Zoom. All right, bye.